Hi everyone. In today's video, we're going to go over one of my favorite builds I've ever made, which is called case briefs and class notes. And then there's another version of this I made called case briefs, which is kind of a simpler version of this. So we're going to go over the simple version first, then we're going to go over the more complicated version and talk about lots of different alternatives of ways you can do this. Um, but I'll show you kind of what I did with these first. So with the simpler one first, Basically, I just made it to where there's a single repeating item so that someone can brief a case um, for class, let's say if they're in law school, for example, and they can say this case brief is for whichever class, they can say which class date it's for, where it's situated within the class, um, class's case book, the chapter page number, their case name and title, the court, the citation, the link to the case, one sentence summary, summary of holding, facts, issues, holdings, for each issue of rule and additional notes. And then if they wanted to do a second case, they say add another. And then if they want to do another one and another one and another one, then they would do that. And then what would happen at the end is there is a template um, here where when they are done with the um, filling everything out, and they go on to the output documents section, then they're going to be able to have this one filled out for them, this document, where it tells them for which class, which date it was briefed on, um, for which um, class date, and all the information here, um, which is based off of my the way that I used to brief cases um, in law school. So I used to do it like this. I would have this date of the class and what the title of the case was and so on and so on. So basically kind of just went off of what I used to do in law school and then I just applied it to a more efficient way of putting this together. So at the end of this, um, they would have a new document generated for each case. So you can do that by saying generate multiple for and then the repeating item name. So um, referring to this particular repeating item here in question. So this one here. And um, so I really like how that one came out just generally. If you wanted it to be really simple and have it to where it's just a repeating item that you can then have this output at the end. And then let's say if you're signed in, you'd also be able to see that in the workflows that you've taken um, and refer back to it there. So that's one simple way of doing it within Documate um, where you just literally have to create a single repeating item. So you go, you can't do it on here. So let's do a new page. So we say add question, then you find repeating item, give it a name like we had here, course and case info, and then you just create which questions you want. So that would be things like this case brief is for, and then these are just to make the um, bold on the other side, this part bold. So we have, you give it, you know, your question type, your variable name, your question title, um, just, this is pretty straightforward. It's not very sophisticated as far as like a build goes, but, um, but that's okay. It's okay for things to be straightforward and simple. So that's one option if you wanted to do it that way. Um, which I did in this case. Um, and then the, other way that I've done this is to make it to where you can do up to five in this case, but um, and you still can have the documents output at the end. So let's look at the back of this one. So case brief and class notes, edit. So this one's a little bit different and a little bit more complicated. And I have um, conditional output documents where we have um, the same template but we have five versions of it one for depending on whether or not they decided to fill out more than one case and so here we have for example case brief for the first case the second one the third one the fourth one and the fifth one and then each one only shows if they say yes to wanting to brief another case now this one can be run by itself like this as well with the outputs documents being the same as what I showed you before with this type of format where you have the facts issues the holdings the rules additional notes and so on but what I like about how I did this one is I connected it to notion through Zapier 
So actually, this is what the um, the zap looks like. So if you have a Zapier, it looks like this. And I created a trigger where this particular case brief and class notes workflow is completed. Then an action is created in Notion where you have cases for case one, case two, case three, case four, and case five are sent to a Notion uh, database that looks like this. And the output looks like this, where you have the case information really neatly and beautifully um, transferred over to a calendar where it goes on to the date of the class so that when you go here and it's the day of your class and you are asked about a particular case, you're able to pull it up really quickly and refer to your notes that you did when you were briefing that case, maybe several weeks before or, or the day before. You can also see a case brief list like this. And then you can also see the table of cases like this. Um, depending on your preference. So I made it to where when you complete this workflow, it automatically feeds and adds those things to your calendar. So it's pretty fun. I thought it might be interesting to go into this one a little bit this week, just because um, there's some interesting things that were done here that I thought were fun and cool to figure out. And even if it's, you know, like, for example, you could just say, you know, it doesn't have, you don't have to go through this long, complicated build in order to just do something that you could do simply, which, for example, you could say you could have just made the Notion page first and only, for example, and you could have just made it to where, you know, um, when you go to the date of the class, for example, you just say add an item and then you can put the case name and then the core and the citation and all that stuff directly in here. That's fine. There's more than one way to do multiple things. For me, what I was thinking when I was making this was more about how you would like to interact with your case brief interface. So from like a user experience perspective, how would you like to interact with this information? Um, and also whether you were trying to sell this as a template or if you're trying to, you just use it internally or whatever else. So for me, it was just kind of also an intellectual challenge and question to say, if I wanted to create something that would feed something like this into Notion and automatically add things to the calendar and this and that, how might I do something like that? So I always kind of start from that place of just a question of if I wanted to do this, how might I do that? So um, in this case, what happens is when you um, when you fill this uh, questionnaire out. So I think this is a better way to interact with this information personally rather than um, like this. And also when you do this, then you can have the paper copies generated as well. If you wanted to print them out, for example, um, rather than doing that over here, which you could export this information as well by clicking here and saying export, let's say in a PDF format and you say export. And then we would find that information in our downloads. So let's just look at what that would look like. So you could have it like this as well. So that's fine too. Like I said, there's multiple ways to do something. So you can have it like this. You could have it um, come out at the end the other way. It's just all up to you. So I wanted to be able to have multiple ways of doing this and to go, like I said, through the intellectual exercise of seeing if I could make something like this. So now let's go through and create it. I think we've already kind of gone, gone through how you can make this case brace one with just a single repeating item. That's pretty straightforward. So we're not going to spend a lot of time there because like I showed you, you just have to create a page that has um, a repeating item that has the questions that you want. So if we go back here, um, you can see I just made um, one that's a combo box. So that's this one here where you can either write in your information or choose from the drop down. I just made a date question for the second one and then text and text areas for the rest of them. And then that was pretty much it. And like I showed you here, you just had to say generate multiple for and then um, 
the course and case info. And then if you want to be able to have the naming convention track with the repeating items, then you can um, do this naming convention. Um, so course and case info is the name of this repeating item and it's referencing the item number that refers to the case name so that when it comes out on the other side, it has the case name um, as part of that as well. So that one's pretty straightforward. And if you want to create that, feel free. Um, but if you wanted to make it to where it was more like this one, then you can do it like this. So let's create this one from scratch. So if we go back to our dashboard and we want to create a new workflow, so we come up here and we say create new workflow or the plus new workflow icon here. And then let's give it a name. I'm actually going to call this one template case. <clears throat> case briefs and class notes. I'm going to say create. <clears throat> and then it's going to take us over to our editor. And you can just test it to make sure that it's running correctly before you start in on your long build. So just save and run. And you look so you can see here you have new page and you have continue. So everything looks fine. So that's good news. I would say from a CSS perspective, I would keep this kind of the way it is because I would want someone to be able to sign in or out if they wanted to be able to view their um, entries in their client portals. So I would just like to make sure everything is working the way it should before I start doing this long, complicated build that would take a long time. So if we're going to reverse engineer this or kind of, kind of copy and paste and grab from kind of what I've done before here, what you can see is that I have it to where you can have up to five cases. Maybe in this case, um, we'll just do two. So let's do, we have a new page where it's course and case information case for case one. And then I can put on the side label here, case one. So that's referring to this section here. So let's go ahead and save that. So now our workflow will be set up similar to how the other one is. So you have case one on the side like this, and we have course and case information uh, for case one here. Now we have a drop down and um, text combo. So it's a combo box. So let's go ahead and say this case brief is four. And then this is just an example for, for example, business organizations. So let's go ahead and make that one. So we say add question and we're going to have a combo box. And then our question says this case brief is for business organizations. And we're actually going to go into the back of this just so I can grab the variables as well. So we'll go to our dashboard. I'm going to say edit. And you can see now that we have the back side of this. And I've made it to where um, these are these these asterisks mean that I want the question from here to here to be bolded. You can do that or not. Um, for now, let's just make sure everything functions the way that we want it to function. So let's just say variable name course. It's a combo box. And the choices, I am going to just copy and paste these. So I got these from my old law school's um, page. On I just went to the website and looked up every uh, class that they had and then just typed it in here. So now when we refresh this, we're going to see our new question and then our drop down combo box where somebody could type in if they don't have one of these classes. In this case, if it's for something else, they can type in their own option. Now we also have, um, so this is our template one and this is our um, one that we're looking at. So then we also have a date question here. So the date question, we can just say add question and then date, and then we say for class on December 21st, etc. And in our case, actually, I'm going to copy these ones so it has the markdown already. But if you were going to do this, then you would just put two asterisks on either side of where you want it to be bolded like this, um, just so that I can do this a little bit faster. There's also a way to do this where you do it in Notion first, but um, I think it's not really necessary for this case just because it's just for this one tiny thing. If you were doing a lot of markdown in here, if you were going to do a lot of formatting, I'd recommend that you like start in Notion first, but just to show you like an example. So let me just go to, um, let's see, can 
go to, well, it's not super important right now, but let's just um, make a new page to show you what you could do. So this is like test page. So let's go ahead and make this a width and it's just going to be an empty page. So we could say, for example, like if I was going to say this um, for class on type of thing. So you can make it to where you see how it's bolded or let's say for if you wanted to just be able to be like for a class on December 1st, blah, blah, blah. Did you, but did you see how it translated from reverse like this for a class on this and then it went over here? as bold rather than with asterisks around. It works the same in the reverse as well. So we'll just say December 21st, whatever, 2023, blah, blah. And then if you wanted this to be bolded, you could just say command V. Um, and then when you copy and paste this over here, then it's gonna give you, um, it's gonna make it to where it's bold as well. So if you look, for example, I just kind of set it up for you a little bit here. So even if it doesn't look like it, um, it's, creating this in the background. So I just made some for class on December 21st, 2023, and then bullet points like this in a sub bullet point test test. So in Notion, you just do that using a little tick and then like this. So if you wanted to be able to visually see this in a way that makes more sense to you rather than markdown, then you could just format it here in Notion first, then add a question, whichever one. Let's do um, instruction instead. Then you can just go like this and it will copy paste over here into the correct formatting. So if we save this and now we refresh here, then you're gonna see this formatted properly here like this and, um, and so on. So let's go ahead and get rid of these two and move on. So now we have our course and case information for case one. This case brief is for which class and then you can choose or put in your own for class on, and then you can choose the date. And then our next question will be, where is it situated within the casebooks table of contents or in the class syllabus? For example, the law of agency, then to, um, then to let's give it a little bit of space here, a creation of an agency relationship, for example. So it's just showing like where in the casebook is this. So let's go ahead and make this one a text question type. So if we wanna make that question type, we say add question text. I'm just going to copy this one for now and the variable. So I say case context, contents, context. Um, so I think it's really important for someone to, um, to get situated in their mind of where they are in their um, case book for when they're doing these. So the next one is going to be another text one that says, chapter and or, and you could just say, and or page number in the case book. For example, chapter one, page three. So chapter, page number, and you can make these different like case, chapter, page number, or class, or whatever you like. Um, whatever naming convention you want that would be clear to you for your, um, for your build. So the next one we say case name title Yoast v Wabash. So that's just an example. So let's go ahead and do that one again. And then case name. And then the next one. So now we have case name title. And let's go ahead and save this. Just see where we are right now. So we're building this out just step by step. You don't have to make these required. So maybe if you're just trying to do a simple, or, you know, just try to like start it. So you can, let's go ahead and include the link for the person to continue later. We don't want to skip the revival review page in this case because somebody might need to go back and change um, what they wrote. So let's go ahead and just make sure we have that. Um, let's go back to our question. So right now we have, this looks pretty good. So now we've just added this part here, save link to continue later here down at the bottom. So that if um, the person who's filling this out, either yourself or someone in your team or whatever, um, can go back, but let's go ahead and just quickly make these not required. So they can do each piece that they have. So let's save that. Okay, let's move on. So we have court, let's say the Supreme Court of Indiana, for example. That's just gonna be another text question. 
and I've made that case court. Make it not required. And then the next one is citation. So we have another text question, citation. And I've put case citation. And then let's do the next one, which is the link to the case. So if that's helpful to have the link to the case, you can look at that pretty quickly. That would be useful. So let's put that here, make these not required. And then we have a one sentence summary of the case. So we can make that a text area. So the difference, which I'll show you the difference between a text and a text area. So we have one sentence summary, case one sentence summary. And let's go ahead and make these not required and also make it to where we can just see them really quick. So now you can see the difference between the text and the text area is relating to the size of the box. So if you needed to write just like a little bit more, a little bit less. This is looking pretty good so far, building it up piece by piece. Let's go back down. So we have the summary of the holding. Affirmed in part, this is just an example. Affirmed in part, um, and this can be text area as well. So affirmed in part and reversed and remanded in part, affirmed in favor of this, blah, 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 summary of judgment, blah, blah, blah. You can just give your example. Uh, case summary of holding is my variable here. Let's make it not required. And then I have the facts of the case here. And that's going to be text area as well. It's actually pretty fast to build this. Obviously, like I've built it before so i'm getting to copy paste but if you think about it you're just sort of like typing in your own version of this um and then issues is another text area and that's going to be something like um, agency information outward looking consequences third party tort victim blah 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 we have the holdings so let's go ahead and make that one add question this is another text area so holdings I'm going to say case holding for my variable here. And then next we have the rule, which is another text area. So add question text area, add the rule, case rule. And then next one is additional notes. So if anyone wants to add anything else that they want here, we can say a text area for additional notes. Brief additional notes is fine. And then let's make these not required. And then save it. See where we're at right now. So now for case one, we have all of these different blocks so far, which look pretty fine. And then I think we might only have one more, which is, would you like to brief another case? So this one is to add some logic to whether or not, then let's make this a yes or no. Would you like to brief another case? Brief another case. And then we can say brief another case, a yes or no. So in this one, I've made that required. So let's keep that as required as well. Um, just so we know whether or not we need to show the next page. Now, because we're going to be asking the same questions on the second page, you can do it like this to where you just have to duplicate this page and it will automatically give you a new variable of like case citation two. And then if you duplicate that one again, it will give you three. And then if you duplicate again, you can say four. And then if you duplicate it again, you can say five. So it's actually, it looks like a lot, but you actually just need to set the first page up and then duplicate it and add some logic. So let's do that now. So we just duplicate this page like this. And now you can see course two, class day two, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, brief in the case two. Now what we need to do here is just um, tidy this a tiny bit. But all of your variables have made um, been made two for you. And if that works for you, you can just leave it that way. Um, and then we just want to add logic and say show if brief another case which relates to this very um this variable here would you like to brief another case and we want that to show this page if that's yes so that they only see this next page if they say yes 
So if we wanted to, we can do that same process over and over and over again and making it to where we have, um, we can change this to case two though, because we want to have this relate to case two on the label on the side, as well as on the title of the page. So that will refresh shortly. And when we say yes, we'll be able to see this next page, course and case information, case two, where you'll be able to do all of these different things as well. So you could just have it this way. So let's say we um, we change the settings and the customizing of the messages to where we just say like, thank you, great work today, or just thank you and put a GIF or whatever you like. So that when somebody runs through this and they um, brief their cases, then it's going to just get stored in the workflows they've taken if they're logged in. Um, so you could access that information from the data manager. So, or like the person's particular, um, their particular account. So their client portal. So instead of having all of these be workflows, they would just show the workflow sessions that they've taken. So they could open that information. If we're looking here by workflow in the data manager, then we'd be able to see the information this way. Um, and so that's pretty, let's look at the like old case brace and last notes ones I've taken. So here you're able to see like, for example, all of the stuff that I've put um, in the past for those particular ones. And then you can download the documents from there as well. And um, when we open this up, we'll be able to see the different ones that we had. So that's fine. Um, so we have like Panoyer and Lion and Castillo in doc and PDF versions of each one. So it looks like this at the end um, of the workflow. So that's pretty cool because then it's just stored in there, especially if they're an organizational user or if you're the admin, um, then you'll be able to see it this way. And uh, people who are on the user side can also see the workflows that they've taken. So you could just leave it there. Um, obviously in this case, we don't have our, um, our template documents uploaded in here yet, but we could just have it to where it's just like this. Um, as I said, if you wanted to, so this is just like different layers of this particular build and how you can make it more or less complex. So let's add the next layer. So we're gonna just make it to where there's two cases in here um, rather than five. But if you were going to make more, you would just do the same process that we just did. You would say duplicate page, and then you would say case three rather than case two. And then you would have all of these already made for you as far as like making a, a new variable. But then you'd want to make sure that this page only shows if brief another case two is yes. So um, you can do it this way. So as I said, in our case, we're just going to have two cases. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this one. So we have case one, we have case two. And case two only shows if brief another case is yes. So, um, and the questions are the same and we didn't have to spend that much time doing that, which is awesome. So now when we refresh this page, we'll be able to see this and then say the side labels will, um, update eventually. It just takes a minute for it to do that. Okay. So let's move on to the next part of this particular one, which is if you wanted to add the layer of an output document. So I'll link to this one as well, but basically um, where I, so I started with looking at my original way of doing this, and then I just created a template version of this where everything was cleared out. So it, that looked like this. And then I used the document tagger to then go through and find my workflow here in this case of the original one it was case brief and class notes and then find my variables and put them where they needed to go for example if i wanted to say for course then i would find course and then i would insert that variable here like this and then it would come out like that so 
that's how I was able to get to that point. And then I just did that for each one. So inserted the variable for the facts and then so on and so on. So like this. And then if I centered it or whatever else, made it not bold and formatted it however I wanted to. So that's how I was able to get to the point of having these um, final versions. So I had the final with repeating item version of the first one that I showed you, which just looks like this. So um, when you have it to where you have the repeating item and you want to when you want to insert those variables, then you would find your workflow up here. And then if it has a repeating item, this one will be available to you. Then you can say format as, and then you can see which one you want. In our case, I wanted there to be multiple documents generated for each repeating item. So you choose that one. Insert a repeating item field. So in my case, that was court and case info. And then you can choose whichever one you want. And so let's say this case proof is four. And then four goes here. And when you insert it, it has this convention here like this with a little I and a dot and then course. So that's how you're able to uh, do the one with the repeating item. And in our case, we are not using a repeating item for ours. So I had made a different version of this where this one relates to specifically case brief for the case brief number one because the variables will be different than case brief two. So I had made a second one that has all the information for case brief two. So since I've already made these, I won't go into a huge um, depth in-depth one of this, but what I would say is this is how you would do it basically is you would say, like, uh, like I said, you would go from the beginning, which is from here, you would go into your document tagger. And if you don't have it already, you can insert add-ins um, where you say get add-ins like this, or you can go to developer and say add-ins here. Mine is here, but if you didn't have it and you wanted to look for it, you could just say document and then search and say add. And then you would need to create an API key to connect it together. So you would do that, um, go to settings, API keys, and then just create a new key like this super easily. Then you just log that into or um, connect that to your document tagger. Um, so then basically all you do from there is um, insert your variables. So in our case, we have our um, template variables or template case briefs and class notes here. And I would just find my variables that I want to um, insert. So I would go here to course. And then I would find course and say if I want it to be standard uppercase or have the first letter be a capital, then I'd say enter variable and then that would do that for me here. For this one, it's just today's date and that's in every single um, um, every single workflow for you automatically uploaded for today and then you can format it the way you want to and then you just insert that variable and it will pull that information from the system and generate that particular date that you briefed it on and then this is obviously the um, the variable that I created for which class date. Um, then you just go through and do that for each one of these um, wherever you wanted it to be. For the purposes of this video, since I've already done this, um, I'm going to just use the ones I already made. So this is final no repeating item where there's five cases from when I made this on August 31st, 2022, case one, um, case brief. So um, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, duplicate this and actually just because I want things to be pretty clean. So I'm going to say final no repeating item, two cases. Um, Final, I'm going to say final template, two cases, and then let's put today's date, January 28th, 2023, case one, case brief. Or you can say case brief, case one. Just however it makes sense to you to name this would be fine. So final template two cases, January 20, blah, 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 case one. And then let's do the same thing and duplicate this one, but it would be for case brief two. Case two. And then we have that there. Okay, great. 
So now we want to have these go inside of our um, workflow. So as our output documents, and then we will attach logic to them. So let's go back into our template case briefs that we're working off of, and we go to output documents, and then we're gonna find these on our desktop. So let's go to desktop. And then this one is for um, case one. And we can change the names as we like. So we have case brief one. Now we have case brief two. Now we can create conditional document output. So we can make it to where if brief another case is yes, then, so that's referring to this first page, or this is case um, two, but, um, and actually one thing we need to note here is that there's a slight mistake here, which is in case two, since there are only two, there shouldn't be an option for the person to make an, to brief another one. Um, so we can go ahead and delete this one because they only have the option to brief two cases. So let's go ahead and save this. And actually we have an issue here because I've made some conditional output dependent on that, um, some different questions. So let's go ahead and try this one more time. So we say create conditional output documents. So the default document would actually be the first one, case one, because you'd always do at least one case. Um, but if brief another case is yes, then we want to output number two because otherwise they would have said no and they would only have one um, case brief to, to see. So if that was confusing, we can just run through it one more time. So basically what we're just saying is when somebody's running through this particular questionnaire, they have the opportunity to always have the first case um, completed and then they can say yes or no to um, to doing another one. If they say no, <clears throat> they have a, they have the opportunity to change their answers or continue and they would see their final template. Obviously we're gonna change the name of this, but just to show you that the person would be able to see this one. They didn't fill anything out, so it's empty, but they would see it. Now, if they wanted to go back and change their answer from false to true, or from no to yes, I do want to brief another case. And then they're going to be taken to case information for number two. Then when they continue, they'll see both. So they have case number one, case number two, continue. And now they'll see the case one, template in the case two template because they said yes. So that conditional document that we made it here is now showing because they said yes. Now we can, and like I said, these are going to be empty because we didn't fill anything out, but functionally we can see that this is working. Um, so what we'll do next is let's go ahead and rename these really quick. So in my case, in the previous one, I named them like this, case brief, and then the case name for number one. So case brief, case name. And then in the other one, case name two, because that's referring to the second case's name as a variable. So um, we can see that here on this one, case underscore name underscore two. So anytime you want to call to the um, name of a variable and you want to have it output somewhere, you can use this convention of a dollar sign and then two curly brackets and then the variable in the middle. So now when these documents are output, it will show whatever the person has put for case name or case name two in those spots in place of this crazy long template name. This and this is an internal name if you don't want it output or shown at the end. And the reason for that is specifically to show in your document templates tab as, um, so we say files document templates it's gonna show here. So you see how I have these here? This is for you 
to be able to look and see what's happening and what your documents are and to be able to differentiate between um, maybe different versions of the same template um, and so on. So that and also when you change the name to um, have it be different. Um, let's say we wanted to do any additional notes and we said something or said something, nothing at all. Let's just double check. Then we can change this. There might be an error or something because there's no name for it or it will just show empty. So that's fine. So we can see that here and we can see here. So now you can see that this name has been changed. And when the person um, goes to download it, the name of this will also be different. So when they download it, it's not going to have the crazy name underneath. So now what we're going to do is just double check everything and make sure it's the way that we want it to be. So in our templates, case brief and class notes, um, workflow or questionnaire, we have all of these set up. We have case one with different variables that are not required. And we have a question at the bottom that says, would you like to brief another case? We, if they say yes, we have our page logic that says show if brief another case is yes. And we don't have that question asked again here at the bottom because they can only do two. In our output documents, we have two versions of the same template, but the other, the second one here, they have different variables because this relates to the variables um, that are associated with case two. And the first one is associated with the variables for case one. And we have it to where the default document is case brief for the first one. And the conditional document is the second one where we only want to, to show if they've said yes to briefing another case. We can also make it to where these are emailed to ourselves or to a specific variable. In this case, um, we also don't Want, we don't want to do that, or we could if we wanted to, but I don't want to. Um, and then we could display, uh, make it to where the final documents are not displayed to the workflow taker, but in this case, we do want them to. So different options here. And then we could make it to where um, the documents only generate the end as a Word or a PDF. Um, in our case, I think it would make more sense to either have both or just the Word because uh, you would want to be able to download it and add more things to it before if you wanted to, or you'd want to be able to just have it as a PDF. So I'm going to keep it as both because I think that makes the most sense. If you wanted to change the style with custom CSS, you could do that here. We wanted to keep the final RP page so people can. Um, change their answers if they wanted to. And then we can customize the messages here. Um, for example, if you have the save link to continue later. Um, and then for me, I just wanted to change this one to say thank you. And I'm always a big fan of adding GIFs everywhere. So I'm going to add a GIF that says something like Bravo. Lava. There's like a Bravo. Oops, there's like an avocado bravo or something that's really cute. Oh, this one, bravocado, which I think is so cute. So I want to embed that one. I'm going to make it responsive and copy this code into my template here in the bottom of thank you. So um, that when the person finishes, they get like a little fun surprise. So... For example, when they're done with this, they can say continue. And it will say bravocado, <laughs> which I think is just so cute. And then they can still get their case briefs or email them to themselves if they want to. But how cute is that little avocado? Um, so yeah, anyway, that's an option if you'd like to. So that's the next layer, which is that the person can just, you can just have it to where this is it. This is the workflow. And um, there's nothing else that happens. Now, the next layer of this is the Notion layer. And just before we get to that layer, I'm just going to change this to a great work or great job or something like that. Great job. 
So now when they get to this last page, it will say great job, bravocado, and then they'll be able to um, view their different case briefs. And obviously, like we said, they're going to be pretty much empty right now because we've only filled in this tiny additional note. So now when we get into Notion, we need to set up um, Notion, a Notion database first before we try to do anything in Zapier. So let's talk about what it is we're trying to do next first, because like I said, you could do it just like this and that's fine because you'd be able to view this information in your data manager or your client portal or lots of like other places, especially also the output documents that you have made. So it's fine if you just do it here, but if you want to have different layers of this, you can. So, and it's all about how do you want to interact with and visualize this information. So in my case, I wanted to be able to interact with this particular information in this format where I have case one, case two, and I am able to interact with this information in this manner. And then I want to visualize it, though, on the other side in Notion like this, so that when the day of class comes, then I can open it here and um, go from there. And I can see it like this, and I can see it like this. So it's just a matter of how you would like for this information to appear to you and how you'd like to interact with it. So what we're going to do is, if you'd like to, you can go on to this next layer. So what I've done in this particular case is I made a table of cases and made it to where we have case name, court, citation, one sentence summary, case link, course, context, where situated, summary of holdings, and all the ones that track with each part of our other workflow. I also made a space for the doc version of the brief and so on, and then created time. And then I just made it to where there's this table in a list form and a calendar form. So in order to make this from scratch, I'll show you how to do that now. The easiest way to show you is to have myself logged into a different account here on Notion um, and then my other one on the desktop. So because this is in a different one than where I want the destination to be. So in my case, uh, the way that I like to do this is I like to have a page that only hosts all of my databases. So I have a, a page called databases. And then if I want to link the view of this database to a different page, then I can do that. Um, let's say if I can see an example here, for example. So if I want to have my own separate page that has some other stuff on it besides a database, because a database full page doesn't really let you do anything else. So if I wanted to be able to have other things on a page, but include that table somewhere or that database somewhere and hide it and show it, then I can do that using the linked option. So I usually like to start from the database being a full page on its own. So let's go ahead and do that now. So if you don't have a page like this, I would recommend that you create one. And then let's go ahead and say, uh, just do a forward slash, and then you're going to say database, and then you're going to say full page. And then in our full page database, we can call it template um, case briefs and class notes. Um, and then you can see that we just have a table here. Now, one thing I will recommend that is a new feature that happened um, since I made this um, is the ability to create some sub items, which I like using a lot. So I recommend that you create this. So you just say sub items, it's going to create these for you. So just say create. And then if you don't want to be able to view them in this view, you can just click on them and say hide in view and then hide in view. So I would recommend starting with this blank um, template or table, and then we're going to build it out. So for the first one, we're going to say case name. So I'm just going to copy paste, but you'll uh, create this from scratch, which is just a text one and it's our title one. So we can't change this type of property. So it's just the title. Let's have the court and the court is going to be a multi-select. So that's already multi-select for us. And then we have next our citation. 
which is just a text. So we can just go like this, citation, and then the next one is going to be our one sentence summary. And then just one sentence summary is also text. Next one is a case link, and that's going to be a URL. So we go URL, give it the name, case link. Next is our course, which is a multi-select here. Just in case that um, particular one is for more than one class, we can make it a multi-select. Um, and then we have context where situated, and that's going to be text. And then we have chapter, page number, and that's just text. And then we have a summary of the holding, which is also text. Then we have facts, which is also text. Then we have the issues, text as well. Then we have the holdings, text. Then we have the rule, or the rules, text, oops. Then we have additional notes, that's text. Then we have the class date, which is a date. Okay. We can change if we want this to be a full date. Um, we can change this to where we have time is 24, or you can just change this as you like. So I like a full date. And then doc version of brief. I think I'm going to have this as well and have it as an attachment, files and media, doc version. And then we have created time. So that's just a created time here, which does automatically for you. And then if there's anything else you want to add there, you can. But what happens then is that when you open this, all of those and all of that information is here for you like this. And the way that I have this on happen on all of them is part of Zapier. So I'll show that you you that in a moment. So this is how this would come out. And the idea here would be less that you would you wouldn't really interact with with it this way, you'd really interact with it more either from the case brief list like this or from the calendar like this. So we need to create those as well. So in our case, let's just have a bit of a test data. So let's just say test case um, one and then like test case two. And let's just have two. We can delete this other one. And let's make it to where the date of the first class is today and the date of the next one is next Monday. Well, actually, that doesn't make sense because it's a Saturday, but let's make it Monday and Tuesday next week. So what we want now is to create the new views. So in this case right now, we only have a view of a table, but it doesn't look super great to interact with. So let's make a new view and make it a calendar. So now when we look at this, we can see our test case one here. We can see our test case two here. Now, if you wanted to also be able to see this, let's say in a board view, you could do that. If you wanted to see it, so let's say you could say, you could even add statuses to this, for example, saying like um, in progress or to do or whatever else, you could do that here as well. Um, I think in my case, I would prefer to have a gallery so I think a gallery would look nice like this. So then you could add pictures or whatever else. So I think that gallery is pretty cool. And then you could also have a view of it as a list like this, which is fine as well. So you can have all of them. You can have just one. Let's see. Timeline is not as interesting, but you can do that one as well. In this case, it's not like super useful. Um, but that's what it would look like if you had one. I think I would add maybe a board view as well, but you'd want to associate, you know, something with that. But um, yeah, if you wanted to have it like this, I think maybe no, I'm not going to have it. 
So we have a table view, a calendar view, where the calendar view we can say is based on the class date. But if you wanted to be able to show certain information here, for example, you could also do that by editing this um, view. So if we say edit view and you wanted it to have certain properties shown. So let's say you wanted to have the um, class date shown. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. So you can see that here. If you wanted to have something else shown instead of that, you can do that like this. So we can say hide this one. Maybe we'll do instead the course. There's nothing on here, so we won't be able to see it. That's how you would do it if you wanted to. So now we have a great database where we have a calendar view, we have a table view, we have a gallery view, we have a list view. So we can view this information in many different ways. So I think actually the table view is the least helpful here, and these other ones are more easy to interact with, but it's up to you how you want this to be formatted. So when we want to link these two things together, when we want to link together our uh, beautiful workflow that we've created, which is like this, and we want to link that to our Notion page that we've created, the way that we can do that is through Zapier. And the way that you use Zapier is uh, there's a free plan. Um, I think in the free plan, I'm not sure exactly if you can make multiple steps, but in our case, we're going to just make two, uh, we need to make two actions. Um, so just be aware of that. So I'm going to actually make this over here in code word hex. Um, and then I'm going to say create new zap. And then we're going to, you can give it a name right away. So I'm going to say template case briefs and class notes. Um, it's going to be called Gavel by the time this issue goes. So document has been rebranded as Gavel. I'm going to say Gavel to Notion. Um, I just needed to refresh for a second. So I'm going to look for Gavel and click on it. And then we're going to say workflow completed. Continue choose our account. So mine, it's this one. And then we'll say continue. And then we need to find our workflow name. So in our case, that's going to be this one called template case briefs and class notes. So let's find that one. Continue. It's going to test our trigger. We just want to make sure that there's data here for us to be able to pull from. So great. We have that. So we have data A, and that's fine. It's just a test. Continue. Now we're going to do Notion. And we want to be able to have it to where we create a database item. Continue. And then we're going to choose our Notion account. So in our case, it's going to be this new one, hello. We want to find this one. Continue find our database. So we're using this one, template case brace and class notes. And then now we're going to get into the first one, which is going to be relating to case one. So we're saying the case name for the first one, um, not the second one. So you can see how we have uh, data case name for the first one, and then this is case name two, so we want to do the first one. So let's just make sure we review where we are. So this is the old one, but let's look at this new one. So we go to our questions, and we have in the first one, we have our course, and but our we want our case name to be the thing that is the first part of our, um, like the main title here. So we want to look for that first. So let's find that and put that here. So for case name, let's find data case name. Now for the case link, let's find case link. 
instead of case link two, for example, which would be relating to the second one. So we have case link. And this is just a quick note to say you want your variables and your um, titles on your database to match up well so that it's easy to find and link to each other in Zapier. So the course here, you can say custom and then you can find that here. So we have here our data course and then we have our rule. So let's find our rule. You can also search it like this. Case rule, citation. So we can look for citation and we can say whether or not we want to include time with date fields. So I'm gonna say true and then start date and time. Let's see. So case date, date, class date here. And then we have summary of holding. Don't worry about the end date and time here. So we can say holding, uh, summary of holding, this one. Context, where situated. Okay, so we can say case contents, context. Then we say additional notes. Brief additional notes, chapter page number, page number, facts, so case facts, one sentence summary, one sentence summary, court, custom, and then we're going to say court, case court, holding, Case holding issues, we'll say, oops, issues, content. Uh, so content is actually relating to the content inside of the Notion page. So it's actually referring to this part here. So here I wanna say class notes because I'm assuming that this person who's using this is going to pull this up on the day of class and then they could add any other class notes here if they wanted to. So we can say we, if we want that to be in any plain text or markdown or custom, I think the format can just look like this. And then let's make sure everything is linked up. So we have issues, issues, holding, holding, court, court, sentence summary, sentence summary, facts, page number, Additional notes, where situated or context, summary of holding, class date. We want the time with the date field, um, the case citation, the rule, the course, the link, the name, and then we have the database here. And then we have content in the middle that would say this. So let's do a, a test of this to make sure that it works. So we have here all the information that was pushed over, uh, which looks pretty good. So if we wanted to see this, um, this one might have some weird date. They usually go like 2070. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do January 28, 2023. So if we go now to our calendar, we can see the one that just pushed through is here with all this test text. And this is, we can say, um, we can say hide property, like always hide this, for example, um, if we don't want this to show. Um, so we can hide, always hide this. But if you wanted this to show, you could keep it, but I want it to always be hidden. Um, and then if you wanted to have your doc version of your brief, you can, um, when you've downloaded it from after running the workflow, for example, you can just uh, drag and drop it into this section. Um, so that is how you can do that here. And you can see class notes is already for you there. So I think that looks pretty cool. And you can also see what it would look like in the gallery view, what it would look like in the list view, and what it looks like here in the table view. So 
One thing to note also is you can sort this table by the date. So we can say by class date, which makes it to where uh, the next up class is at the top. So it's sorting by this date here, you can see. You don't have to have it that way, but I think it would make sense to have it that way. Um, or you can have it done by create a date or whatever. So let's go ahead and save for everyone. I'm gonna sort it by class date. And you can see it here. So if you wanted to do it this way, then we can publish this, but we have a second thing that we need to do before we can publish this, which is we need to make a second one of these where we can um, we could actually duplicate this action and then just change some of these. So um, we need to duplicate this action. So we have this second step now, um, which is going to be that we want to have it to where they do create a database item in this one and in this particular database but we want it to be for the second case so when we look at this we want case name two and we want case link two so let's find case link two and we want the course custom to be course two And we want the rule to be two. So you could even just look uh, rule, let's rule two. And you want the citation to be citation number two. And you want this to be true and you want this date to be the date true. Let's see, class date two. And we want this summary of holding to be two. You can even just look up two, but summary of holding two. You want the context to be two. We want the additional notes to be two. And we want the chapter page number to be two. And we want the facts to be two. Oops. And we want the one sentence summary to be two. And this is referring, like we said, to the variables in our second page. So we're referring to case two. All of these variables are what we're pulling right here. So now we want date case holding to be two. And we want issues to be two. And we want the content. This is again referring to the content of the page here, class notes, to be class notes. And we can say continue. And we can retest this action now. So when we come over here to the table, we'll see another one that was created here on the bottom, which looks fine. Let's change the date to January 9th, January 3. Now it moves up because it's being sorted by the date. And when we look on the calendar, we can see our two tests, the first one here and our second one here. So I think this looks pretty cool. And we have our different ones here and we have our list here and our table here. And now we can turn this on. We can publish this app, publish and turn it on. I'm going to uh, share a copy as a template. So I'm gonna customize shared details. 
if you want to be able to do this, this is how you would do this as well. I'm going to say template case briefs and class notes, gavel to Notion, describe how this helps help you. Anytime workflow is completed in gavel, create database item in Notion and create database. Um, I'm going to say for each case brief completed. Share, or let's say preview. So it will look like this. Anytime more from blah, 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 blah. Try this created by me. So this is what that would look like. I haven't actually tried doing this before, so I'm going to go ahead and say share. And go ahead and copy this. So I've made it towards public where anyone on the internet can discover a copy of your app and use it as a template. So that way you can try this as well. I can email it, send it in Slack, Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn, or I can just copy this um, Zapier URL. So then somebody can try this app if they want to and whatever else. So I think that looks pretty fine and I like it the way that it is. So I'm going to leave it as it is and go back. So now we can see the zap that I created here is on. If I look over here to where I have it stored, I have it here in code word hex. Um, sorry. If you want to be able to move something to a different folder right now here, it's in home. You can see it here. I'm going to just say move to folder and then say code word hex move to folder. So now it's here. And so now what we can do is test it with some real data rather than this test data. So let's go ahead and try this particular one using some data from previous cases. So I don't have to start from scratch, but we can just, yeah, let's just do two case. Let's do one case and then maybe we'll do two cases. Let's do one. So let's get out of here because we don't need this one anymore. Let's make sure we save it. This is the old one that I made before. And that's what it looked like from the one that has five. And this is the one that we're working off of that I'll be able to share with you. And it looks like this. So let's go ahead and try it. So I'm going to use first this information. So business organizations. And then I'm going to use today. And then we're going to say we're situated in the case book. And then I'm just going to use this one. Uh, chapter one, page three, for example. And then this example of this case, this example of the Supreme Court, this example of this citation, this example of the link to the case, uh, this example of a one sentence summary, this example of a summary of a holding, this example of the facts of the case, the issues and this is the example of the rationale and the holdings um, here and here's an example of the rule here's an example of my additional notes the question here is what is the relationship not what did they do would we like to brief another case? For this first example, let's say no. Make sure it's working correctly and test everything. We can, so it's good. It skipped case two because we said no. And now we can edit if we want to. We can say continue. Now it says great job, bravocado. So that's working. We can also come to our notion thing and we can see that that's been added here. Awesome. It does do this thing where if you've only done one, this is a heads up, if you've only done one, but there are two available and the zap, just because the zap is running that way, it's creating a second step where this one's empty. So you can just delete that. And when we come to our calendar, we'll be able to open this up and see all the information that we had, as well as our option to have some class notes. So we can view it this way. We can view it in the gallery like this. We can view it in our list like this. 
we can also see it in the table like this. And if we wanted to add our PDF of what this looks like, so in our case, it looks like this. We could also download this as a docx. So I'm going to do that in this case. Um, I think it makes more sense to have a docx. Um, then it looks like this. So we have its four business organizations. It was briefed on this date for class on today's date. Um, USV Wabash, this is the court. This is the link. This is the um, one sentence summary where we are in the case, the chapter and page number, a summary of the holding, the facts, the issues, the holdings, the rule. Then you could actually print this if you wanted to, and then any additional notes. If you wanted to add additional notes here, you could. If you wanted to just be able to add this one to your, um, like add this here, for example, the doc version of your brief for this case, then um, let's say we do it here instead because it's like a bit messy. So we can click on it. And then we want to say empty, we can just say choose file. And then we can find our download here and say open. So now that case brief that we um, made is associated with our case brief here. So I always think this looks pretty cool. I like it. I'm going to say um, it looks awesome. And then let's try it where we have two. So now we can see this like this, we can see this like this, we can see this like this, this, this. So now we're just going to do it to where we go back and we edit our answer here to say that we want to have yes for briefing another case. So now we have the opportunity to brief a second case. So let's go ahead and do one for this one. Uh, so we're going to have Castillo versus um, Case Farms of Ohio. So this one is our case name. So let's actually look for um, the class first. So this is for business organizations again. So let's go ahead and put that here. And let's say it's for class on uh, February 1st. And where it's situated is this so let's go ahead and put that. The chapter and our page number in the case book is this. The case name and title. And you can rearrange those if you want to uh, have it be differently arranged. The court here is this one. So let's go to edit property. And then you can see the options uh, for the Western District. I can just copy that and paste here. And then the citation is going to be here. Then we have the link to the case. So case link here. I can either open it like this or I can copy it like this. Copy to clipboard. And then the one sentence summary of the case. So this is not quite a one sentence, but that's fine. And then our summary of the holding. Let's find that. That's here. That's probably more of a one sentence summary, but that's fine. Facts. Let's find the facts here. And then we have the issues. And I'm just doing it like this because I'm doing it as an example. Obviously, you would actually like do this as the exercise in and of itself. The uh, holdings for each issue. rules and the additional notes I had a lot to say about this one apparently uh, one second so we have that here now so now when we say continue I have the opportunity to change my answers for case one or change my answers for case two. And I can say continue. And I have a great job. Now we have case brief Castillo versus Case Farms of Ohio, and we have a case brief for Yospears Wabash College. So if we 
let's go ahead and get rid of this one just for now. And we can view this one here. We can see the case brief like this. And we can also see the case brief for the other one like this. And we can download for each one like this. We could send this to ourselves as an email if we'd like to. Now when we come over to our Notion page, we can see them here, here, and here. So let's clean this up just a tiny bit, but you can see all of our options here. We can see all of these here, and we can find it on our table as well. So let's delete the one that we did before. So it would be the one that has the dog brief. So that's this one. Let's go ahead and delete this one and start from the beginning. We can delete these test ones because those are just tests. So now we have these two cases. And when we look on our calendar, we can see one is for this date and one is for that date. We can open them up. We can add our doc version. We can choose the file for this one. In this case, this one is for Yoast. So let's find our file for Yoast here. Great. So now that one's there. And we can add the one for Castillo. We can add our doc version like this. And that's it. So now when we look at this in the gallery view, we can see them like this and like this. When we see them in the list view, we can see them like this and like this. And we can also see them in the table here like this. And that's it. So I hope that was useful to kind of go over how to do this. I can also share this one as a template. So I can share this by going to share to web. And then I'm going to say allow allow duplicate as template. It's never going to expire. I'm not going to allow editing or comments, but you could. You could also make this to where you can have it search engine indexed or not. I can copy the link here or copy the link here. Um, but that's how you would be able to make this to where when someone does get this and they open it. They can see it like this and you, they can say duplicate. So that is what it will look like when I share this with you, but you'll be able to see this like this. And I think that that's going to be it for now. Um, and then I'll also share my template for the zap. So you'll have the zap template, the notion template, and then I'll give you the run link for this particular one as well. So you can reverse engineer it um, alongside this video and go from there. Thank you so much for your time and attention. And I hope this was useful. See you in the next video.